Hi, uh, I'm OKJ and I'm still waiting for my O-level results as you might have already known by now. In the meantime, I've been taking on a few big challenges. I've gone to a radio show, I've written my Lian He Zhao Bao Chinese commentary and what was expected for me for the third and final challenge was making a documentary completely in Mandarin. But I kind of have a confession to make. That documentary has been done and I've done it just before the O-levels. So earlier back in March of this year, I contacted my documentary subject, who is someone that I've met since November 2020. But this uncle doesn't speak anything else but Mandarin. And I've tried many things. Uh, I tried to use my broken Mandarin, which fell apart really quickly. I looked for a translator and that didn't really work because I felt we weren't building that relationship that was required for me to make a documentary. And if that means relearning a language that I've avoided for years, then that is exactly what I'm going to do. And I think I have gotten to the level of proficiency to be able to now communicate in Mandarin. <laughs> But what I am going to do in terms of playing this for you is not really just about those golden nuggets of content but also it's a chance for me to review how I've interacted with him and also what we may be able to take away from it. Now the documentary ended up being somewhat of a father and son relationship so in this particular case the way that I've asked questions to him and probing deeper is acknowledging the fact that okay I respect that you have lived a longer life than I have you have gathered so much of this life experience. Show me the way that you have walked. What are the pitfalls? What are your advice for success? Share with me your wisdom. And so I think that is how I position myself during the interview process. Now, 没有啦,这个那一次老板做的,人家以为看你为你是帮人家在打工。To be honest, this is already an achievement that I couldn't have done during the first few times that I've met uncle because I wasn't able to ask these kinds of questions or at least to use very specific vocabulary in order to eke out those kind of stories. Uh, however, I'm also reminded of is just at this particular point in time, remember that I am doing this in March and I only took my O levels in May, but I feel like I was at a place where I could speak more Mandarin. So as you can see, sometimes if you do not phrase your questions well enough, then the documentary subject doesn't understand who, what, what are you trying to ask. So that was my stumbling. If I had better vocabulary and a better fluency, I think I could have done a lot better. However, because this is a very organic kind of conversation, um, there's a lot more leeway for me because it's not just on what I say, but how I say it. <laughs> 强了啊,就是不用休息的,那时候他们有休息,啊,休息的时候我叫我朋友来帮忙,顶他的位,啊,我整本身是没有休息。As I was reviewing that particular point, I think I'm reminded of, uh, perhaps what 
pushed me into doing the documentary early. I think what really motivated my decision at the time is that even though I wasn't speaking as articulately as I would like to when it comes to Chinese, I could at the very least start to understand what uncle was trying to say. Because throughout my whole learning journey, the biggest input of the Chinese language had been from listening to other people, people from all walks of life. And I think that gradually improved my listening comprehension skills, such that I've gotten to the point that if I can understand all of these people, surely I can understand what uncle is trying to say. And so I had to first make this documentary such that it can be a documentary that is a surrogate of his thoughts, because this represents a part of him a genuine and sincere part of him that I have helped to polish such that it is more accessible to the people around him and perhaps even to strangers. And therein lies the crux of what listening comprehension is, at least for me as a documentary storyteller. Can I listen to someone's story so that I can ask better questions, the right questions, questions that prove that I was genuinely listening to the story that you're sharing with me, that if words can't do justice to your own life experience, that I can help you do it with the tools that's available to me in the documentary medium. And I wouldn't have been able to do it if it was not for the lessons that I've had along the way throughout this entire Mandarin learning journey. To be honest, as I sit down with you here to review what this has been done, uh, the fact that I made the decision to do this documentary and had the chance to complete it before even taking the O-levels, now that I look back at it, it is a decision that showed that I must have grown in a way that I'm able to trust myself, that I was already good enough prior to even taking the exam. And that was the spirit of this entire series and the spirit of me tackling the three big challenges. I look forward to you seeing this documentary when it comes out and I hope that you would be able to understand a little bit more of this uncle and a piece of him. Thank you very much for watching and tune in for that next chapter. Bye!